From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Thursday the 2nd of March 2023. Good afternoon. In today's Spotlight story, we run through the meeting between President Xi and President Lukashenko. This isn't the only thing happening in the world though, so we'll run through three of today's other important stories. And in our exclusive Nebula section, we run through why YouTube is currently under fire. But first, why have the Chinese and Belarusian governments met? Belarusian dictator and close Putin ally Alexander Lukashenko met with China's Xi Jinping in Beijing on Wednesday in a further sign that China is closing ranks with Russia and its allies. Ever since the beginning of the war, Belarus has made its close ties with Russia clear. A good example of this is the fact that throughout the last year, newspapers have speculated about whether Belarus is about to enter the war. The visit by Lukashenko is the latest in a series of actions China has taken in regards to Ukraine and Russia. China's top diplomat Wang Yi met the Russian president Vladimir Putin in Moscow last week, around the same time China announced its peace plan for Ukraine, which has been met with scepticism in the West. At their summit, Xi and Lukashenko expressed deep concern about the war in Ukraine and their shared extreme interest in the soonest possible establishment of peace in Ukraine. Belarus has been a key ally of Putin's Russia for years, and Lukashenko allowed Russia to use his country as a launchpad for the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Lukashenko said in the meeting that his country fully supports Beijing in its aims to restore peace to Ukraine. China announced this last week and called for people to respect national sovereignty. China's 12-point plan called for hostilities to cease and for peace talks to be resumed, saying dialogue and negotiation are the only viable solution. It also called for an end to unilateral sanctions and the Cold War mentality. It notably did not call for Russian forces to withdraw from Ukraine. In response to this plan, President Zelensky said he agreed with some parts of it and that this was a sign of China's willingness to engage. Zelensky said he would like to meet Xi Jinping, adding that a meeting would benefit our countries and security in the world. China has not yet responded to his call. The West was naturally sceptical of China's plan for Ukraine, given the fact that China has so far refused to condemn Russia's invasion and has boosted trade and cooperation with Moscow over the last year. China has sought to position itself as neutral on the war and is one of a number of countries that has abstained in UN votes condemning Russia's actions. Nevertheless, the US has alleged that China is considering supplying weapons and ammunition to Russia, which Beijing strongly denies. OK, so that's our main story for today, but there's a lot more going on around the world. So here's a rundown of three other stories. It's been reported today that Bakhmut in eastern Ukraine is at risk of being encircled. Following six months of Russian forces trying to take the city, Russian forces have intensified their efforts in recent days. As a result, they've gained ground. For their part, the Russians appear to be claiming that Bakhmut is almost theirs, with the separatist leader in the Donetsk region claiming that practically all roads leading to the city were under Russian fire control. In an address to his people last night, President Zelensky praised those defending the city, saying he was grateful to each and every person who is heroically holding the area. He went on to call for more modern aircraft to be given to Ukraine by its Western allies, so they can defend themselves against Russian terror. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. The mystery illness known as Havana Syndrome that apparently afflicted US personnel in American missions around the world was not caused by a foreign adversary, a years-long US intelligence assessment has concluded. It all began in 2017, when multiple diplomatic and intelligence personnel in the US Embassy in Havana, Cuba, reported a range of symptoms, including things like hearing loss, severe headaches, nausea, dizziness and more. Cases of the mystery illness started popping up around the world in Colombia, Vietnam, Russia, China, Austria, India and others. There were all sorts of theories mostly centred around the idea of some sort of sonic weapon being used by a hostile state to target American personnel. 
But now, five US intelligence agencies, having reviewed around 1,000 cases of the anomalous health incidents, have determined it is very unlikely that a foreign adversary was responsible. Officials say they have not found one single explanation, but that many cases appear to have different causes, ranging from environmental factors to undiagnosed illnesses. Pope Francis has told cardinals and senior Catholic church officials that they must pay rent for their housing in the Vatican City and Rome. The new rules are part of cost-saving measures and were summarised in a note by the head of the Vatican's finance ministry following a meeting with the Pope last month. Previously, cardinals who lived in Vatican-owned apartments in the Vatican or Rome only paid for utilities, not rent. Meanwhile, bishops and other senior managers paid subsidised rent. But now the Vatican-owned apartments will be rented out to cardinals, bishops and others at public rates. The note announcing the cost-cutting measures said the Pope declared officials must make extraordinary sacrifice to increase the church's income flows. It comes two years after Pope Francis cut Vatican cardinal salaries by 10% as the Holy See's income took a hit from the pandemic. In the final uplifting story today, we're going to discuss the winners of the 2023 Gizmodo Science Fair. Researchers from the University of California released results commissioned by Solar Aqua Grid, which found that by covering all of California's 4,000 miles of canals with solar panels, this could save about 63 billion gallons of water annually, enough for the needs of about 2 million people, whilst also generating a huge amount of renewable energy. A local water utility company is working with the university on two pilot sites, which will open next year as a proof of concept. That's all we have time for on YouTube today, but if you want to see our discussion of why YouTube is currently under fire, then watch the extended ad-free edition of The Daily Briefing over on Nebula. That's the streaming service we're building with a bunch of our creator friends, many of whom you're likely to be already watching. That means that by signing up, you not only get an extended ad-free daily briefing every single day, you also get to watch exclusive and ad-free videos from the best educational creators on YouTube. That's things like Real Life Law's incredible Modern Conflicts, which breaks down contemporary disputes around the world, Neo's Underexposure, which beautifully dives into complex and shadowy topics you've always wanted to know more about, or Extremities from Wendover Productions, which uncovers some of the world's most remote places. All of these are only available on Nebula, just like our extended daily briefings and a whole bunch of other exclusive TLDR content which never comes to YouTube. If you want to sign up, use the link in the description so that they know you came through us. That helps us out a whole lot, as does watching on Nebula more generally. So thanks for signing up and we'll see you on Nebula.